Good morning. It is Sunday morning, December 30th, 2012 at 11, 10 a.m. And I hope as you're watching this that it finds you woke up with a great attitude, a huge smile on your face, ready to take on a brand new day. I also hope this finds that your Christmas was a joyful one, full of many blessings and unconditional love. Before I get into the guts of my message this morning, I wanted to make something very clear. Each and every Sunday that I share a message with you, I don't do it as a professional in any manner of psychology. I don't have a PhD. I don't have a doctorate, or for that matter, even an associate's degree in psychology. The stories and advice I share with you I base on my personal experiences, the challenges and the obstacles in my life, and how I overcame them always landed on my feet. My hope is, and I pray, that something I share with you may help you with your similar situation. Maybe what you're going through right now is similar to what I went through in my life, and it can help you get through your hardship. Today's message I like to entitle The Positive Perspective. I truly believe that even though you can't control what happens in your life, what you can control is the attitude in which something happens to you. And in that, you will be able to master the change rather than the change mastering you. I really believe that if you don't choose to have the attitude, the proper attitude, the proper positive, optimistic, can-do attitude to get through a situation, if you don't choose to have that, then you unconsciously give somebody else the permission to choose it for you. One common denominator that I have expressed in the last couple of messages is that I believe we truly choose our destiny, that we are truly at the helm of our own vessel on how to get through life in any situation. And it can be as small as what to choose to wear for that day, or what to choose to have for breakfast, or what time to get up in the morning, or what route to take to get to work, or how to master your skills at work. Now, I believe we're all born with a talent. It could be a talent on how to play a guitar, how to sing, maybe your talent is running, Maybe your talent is lifting weights. Maybe your talent is climbing mountains. But it's skill or the unmeasurable, insane workout that we put into that talent that enhances our skills that makes us good at what we want to do. I believe everybody has something to give back. And I believe it's our responsibility as human beings to help one another. I believe we're put on this planet to do that. And whether you're, the, the help you're given is, is in a small way, maybe you're, you might rake your neighbor's yard, or maybe your neighbor across the street is an elderly woman and you take her trash can back to her house from the curb. Or maybe you're uh, a parent and your responsibility or to help another person is that child. I think unless you're helping somebody, even in the smallest way, that you're wasting your time on this planet. And maybe it's not something you do every day. Maybe it's something you do a few times a week or once a month. 
but I really believe it's our responsibility as human beings to give back to our to our to those on this planet and I believe if you have a positive attitude in what you do that helps you do that I think a positive attitude really controls everything in your life and it even shows people what kind of great person you are have you ever noticed that popular positive people people other people just want to be around them they just they want a piece of them um, whether you're a, they're a celebrity or a, um, a popular politician or perhaps a very famous minister or pastor or community leader people just want to be around them because they have that glow about them if you look at people who possess a very positive optimistic attitude every day even their posture is different they walk with their shoulders back they look you in the eye when they talk to you where on the opposite side of that somebody who's always droopy and they're having a bad day every day and their life stinks and they're stuck in this deep black hole they walk around with their shoulders tilt down and they're looking at the ground as they walk along and it's bah humbug this and bah hung them that and no matter if, if, if you gave them a million dollars they'll find some negative spin to put on only a million dollars I wanted ten million dollars you can just see someone's posture that's in direct proportionate to their attitude and I really believe that when you're when you have that positive can-do attitude and you're always optimistic that you if you put a positive um, energy out there you will get positive back does it mean you won't have challenges no there's no guarantee you won't even positive people that 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 seem to own the world that seem to have it all and and their, and their attitude shows that they still have challenges but it's how they handle it we all have challenges in our life maybe you've lost your job maybe you've lost your soulmate maybe you've lost your home maybe you're flat broke life hands us slices of challenges every day and no matter how small the challenge or how thin the slice that that challenge might be regardless of how thin that slice might be it always has two sides to it a negative side and a positive side in much like the way a photographer might take a picture and how he chooses to keep a certain number of pictures and exclude the rest he wants something in that picture that's going to grab your attention that's his positive um, outcome to that certain um, mission he has he wants to grab your attention every day we, we're faced with a challenge and it's how we choose to look at that challenge that's going to get you through it in a better way let me show share a story with you uh, this story I heard about in a song and I can't recall who sings the song I can't even remember the name of the song I do remember the genre is country and western and what it's based on is a young boy playing baseball by himself now some of you may know this song you may even know the artist but this is the premise of the song the boy takes a baseball bat in one hand and the baseball in the other and he throws the ball high in the air and as it begins to drop to earth he swings and he misses now across the street there's there's some kids pointing at him and laughing because he missed that swing 
but the kid was undeterred, wasn't bothered or affected by their comments. So he reaches down and grabs the ball again and has a tighter grip on the baseball bat, throws the ball even higher in the air as it comes down, swings even harder the, than he did the first time, and he misses again. And the kids across the street are laughing even harder. They're on the ground rolling back and forth, pointing at him, laughing, calling him names, what a loser he is. Um, he'll never get it. You might as well just give up. But the kid is undeterred. He's going to hit this ball. He's bound to determine to hit this ball. He's got the ball in his hand for a third time. Throws it even higher. Reaches back even further with the baseball back. Swings even harder than the first two times. And for the third time, misses again. And these kids across the street are laughing even harder. One kid stops laughing, and he gets to his feet, and he yells, You stink as a batter! But the kid looks over across the street, and with his shoulders held back, and a smile on his face, he says, You're right. I do stink as a batter, but I rock as a pitcher. It's really in how you choose to look at something that I believe is the important thing. Because if you open your mind and look at a situation in a positive manner, and it's not always easy. Believe me, there have been times in my life where it wasn't easy for me. If you caught last week's message, there was one point where I had mentioned I was homeless. Or it may have been the video before that, but anyway, there was a time in my life when I was homeless. I won't get into the, into the specifics, specifics why I was. That's not important right now. But I was homeless for a couple of months. And there were times that I was sleeping in a cardboard box in the snow. And everything I owned was on my back. I didn't have, I had one set of clothes in which I was wearing. I was flat broke. I had to wait in soup lines to get fed. And oftentimes, I had to literally fight for a spot to sleep. Sometimes it was under a bridge. Sometimes it was behind a dumpster. Sometimes it was an old, in an old abandoned building. And a lot of people that I would hang out with that were also homeless believed that because they were that way, it would always be that way. But the attitude that I obtained, even at the lowest part of my life, when I had nothing and I lost everything, was sure I'm homeless. But you know what? Tomorrow morning, I might be sleeping in a box tonight or under a bridge tonight. But tomorrow morning, when that sun comes up, I can stand up and I can walk away from that box. Or I can walk away from that dumpster I slept behind last night. Some people on this planet can't even walk. Some people on this planet, even if they can walk, can't see where they're walking to. Or even some people on this planet that can walk and see where they're going can't hear. Some people have to use crutches to walk. Some people walk on prosthetics. Some people have no legs. I remember one day I was walking back from a soup kitchen that I had gone to. I was walking back to my spot where I'd slept under a bridge the night before because at that point that was my home was that bridge. And as I'm walking down the sidewalk, it was a 
good mile long walk. I see someone coming at me on the same sidewalk and he's about a couple hundred yards from me. I could tell he was in a wheelchair but I couldn't make out him entirely. The closer we got to one another the more I could make out the details. And when he got to a point where I could see him clearly the wheelchair was coming at me was coming at me backwards and as he passed me I looked back over my shoulder the guy couldn't have been more than his mid-twenties he was pushing the wheelchair backwards with one leg he was missing his other leg and missing both arms and would steer the wheelchair with the weight of his body and pushing the wheelchair with one leg. And I stopped and I thought to myself, yeah, I'm homeless, but I can walk to and from the soup kitchen. And no matter how bad my day may get, even if I have to physically fight for my spot to sleep out again tonight, at least I can walk to get there. And even if the sun doesn't come up tomorrow, then I'll be in a better place. There are people much worse off than even anyone watching this video. Even if you lost everything, your spouse left you, your job laid you off, you're flat broke, you don't have anything. If you think you have it rough, no matter how bad your day is, I challenge you to do something. When you feel like you've had a bad day, and everything is just falling apart around you. And your day seems as black as a thousand midnights. I challenge you to stop for a moment. And find the nearest hospital in your area. And I challenge you to visit the Child Burn Center. And the Child Cancer Center in that hospital. And even if you can't go there, you can still close your eyes and imagine what those children are going through every day. So if you think you have it bad, think for a moment how bad they have it. That's what gets me through this walk across America. That's what drives me every day. That's my positive perspective on what I'm doing. You know, I'm faced with challenges on this walk. My current challenge, even though I'm not walking until January 7th, is the weight that I put on over the holidays. I've gained about 25 pounds back, and I'm not proud of that, but I own that I've done that. They say you can't change something you don't admit to, and I own that I got lazy, and I fell in this rut over the holidays, and I ate candy and sweets, and I didn't go walking, even small walks while I'm taking the time off from the big major 15,000 miles to spend time with my family, I admit to myself that I got lazy and I fell in that rut and I gained 25 pounds back. And the negative perspective to that is I could feel sorry for myself, but the positive spin that I put on that is that 
I can lose the weight just as not as quickly but just as much as I put it on so my goal one of my New Year's resolutions is to lose weight I didn't wait to the New Year's to do this I started last Sunday right after Christmas and I think I've run two or three times in the last week I even posted videos online about that and my goal is to lose three pounds a week now I'm 51 years old and I don't have to tell you the older you get the slower your metabolism is and the harder it is to, to lose weight but the easier it is to put it on and I know that but you know what even if even if I don't lose three pounds a week let's say I just lose one pound the positive perspective of that one pound I lost number one it's sure better than losing zero pounds and I'm one pound less than I was last week but even if I lose no pounds on a particular week let's say I just hit a plateau and I've lost nothing it's certainly better than gaining anything that's my positive perspective but even let's say the worst happens then I gain two pounds instead of losing any pounds the positive spin on that well at least I didn't I didn't gain three you see there's always a positive spin to everything and as I said life will always hand you slices of challenges and it may be as small challenges as for instance on, on how to make your in the fact that you have to make your bed that morning or that you have to make yourself breakfast that may be the small challenge of that day or the big challenge might be that you just lost your job and now you got to find a new job or the love of your life just left you or maybe the job you've had for X number of years because the economy they they won't they're not gonna fire you or lay you off but they have to take money from you they they can only pay you they have to pay you two thousand dollars less next year as they did the previous year that might be your challenge but regardless of the size of the slice of a challenge you get in life no matter how thin that slice again it always has two sides to it a negative and a positive side the other day on the news here in Ocala Florida I heard a story about a 14 year old young boy who was um, born with a crippling disease called osteo um let's see if I get this right osteo imperfecta I think I'm pronouncing that correctly and if you know any better please correct me but I think it's pronounced osteo imperfecta and what it basically means is he has very brittle bones he's 14 years old he looks like he's about the size of a two-year-old uh, his parents said that every time they have to move him from the bed to his wheelchair he breaks a bone he bruises easily um, in constant pain he breathes through a respirator but when they interviewed him he has to he has the most positive attitude and you would think if anybody has the right to have a negative attitude it would be him but his outlook on life is off the charts positive it's people like him that help me feed my positive attitude yeah I get blisters when I, when I, when I make this walk and my back hurts every day that I make this walk or I do this walk beats up my body in some way it may be a blister it may be that my heel spur hurts me again it may be my back hurts because I just had to pull my 50 pound cart over a one mile hill but what do I truly have to complain about 
This 14-year-old boy can't do anything for himself. It's that vision, and it's the vision of our, our wounded veterans that I keep in the front of my brain housing group that keeps me going. That's my positive perspective on what I'm doing. So I invite you to find something, a challenge in your life. Maybe it's to, you have to find a new job. Maybe you just got fired. But no matter how bad your life is, maybe someone else in the world lives in a mud hut. Maybe they haven't eaten in a month. Maybe they're under a communistic regime. If, no matter how bad your life is, somebody out there has it worse than you do. Use that as your positive perspective. I have found, it's been my experience, that the more positive you are, the more positive energy you put out there in this world, the more positive you get back. Have you ever noticed that positive people seem to have this glow about them this energy just emits off their presence and people just want to be around that whether they're a pastor of a church or they're a very popular politician they just seem to bring so much to the table those kind of people that when the moment they walk into a room the people just stop talking just to hear what these people have to say because they bring so much to the table. They walk with their shoulders back and their chest out. And they've got that square chin and they just have that look about them. Do you know, studies have shown that communication between two people is 7% verbal and 93% visual. That when someone meets you for the first time, they determine their attitude towards you within less than three seconds. If you walk around with your shoulders hung over and your head's always down and you walk along life and you, you've got that bah humbug attitude, those kind of people are generally more unhealthy than most. That They just seem to suck life out of a room. It's feel sorry for me for that, and feel sorry for me for this, and poor me, nothing ever works out for me. They just seem to suck the life out of other people. And the old motto that misery loves company, they just want to pull you down in that black hole where they choose to exist. People like that just seem to have... A bad attitude every day and their life just is bad. When you have a positive attitude and you've got that can do, I can do anything attitude, you just have that presence of that kind of energy in, in the way you walk. You walk more straight, you're more prominent, your, your speech is more positive. And people just want to be around you. That's just that's their that's just the energy they put off. I've had and, and I'm not bragging, please, I'm not bragging about myself. Again, these lessons that I share with you are just my personal experiences of my life. Even though my walk is still in its juvenile stages. I've only been doing this for about a year, and I, the whole walk will take about six years to complete, or even more. But there's been times on my walk, I, I don't see myself as anybody special. I'm just a man on a mission, a vessel with a message that I'm trying to spread about our veterans. But there, are, there have been people that I've met on this walk 
they just want to be around me. They just they just want to to touch me. They want my autograph. They they want to walk with me the entire way. And it's not because I'm I had this God presence about myself. They just want to be around positive people. And you'll find that if you change on how you see things, no matter how bad it is, you'll find people want to be around you. And and when one there's there's an there's a proverb in the Bible that says, Where two or more gather in my name, there shall I be also. And that, that's true about life. If positive begets positive begets positive, does it mean you'll never have challenges? Absolutely not. But it means that when you have a challenge, no matter how great or how um, hard it might seem, that when you get through to the other side, You'll be a greater person because of it. Did you know that Thomas Edison, the inventor of the light bulb, of course, or electricity, it took him 700 times before he discovered on how to create that light bulb. 700 times. When he was interviewed about his invention, the reporter asked him, so what's it like to fail 700 times until you got it right? Thomas Edison said, and this isn't verbatim, I, this is the gist of what he said. He said, I didn't fail 700 times. I discovered 700 times in ways that it won't work until I discovered the way that it will. My motto in life that I apply to my everyday challenges is that falling down doesn't make you a failure. No matter how many times you might fall, it doesn't make you a failure. But staying down does. Well, I've rattled on like I usually do. And let me close in saying this. I may have said this earlier. I've, I've gone on and on for about 30 minutes, so you'll forgive me if I've repeated myself a few times in this message. But I really believe that if you don't consciously decide to choose your attitude in a particular situation, again, no matter how small the challenge or how great the challenge, if you don't take charge of your attitude and how you approach that challenge, then you unconsciously give someone else the permission to do that. And I really believe that you that you are in charge of your destiny. It may be a day-by-day -day destiny. It may be an hour-by-hour -hour destiny. It may be a minute-by-minute -minute destiny. But you need to take control of that helm of the vessel that you're controlling in life. Because whether you wake up tomorrow morning or not, how you live today, carpe diem, Latin, carpe diem, seize the day. It's how you choose to live minute by minute determines your outcome for that day. Again, it's not always going to be easy. You may lose everything, like I lost everything. I was homeless. I had to beg for food. I couldn't find work for months. I had to sleep under bridges in cardboard boxes. Often, no place to sleep at all except on a park bench. I may not have controlled or chose to be where I was. You may not control where you are right now. But you control whether you stay there. People in Hurricane Katrina may have lost everything. People in floods may lose everything. People in earthquakes, tornadoes, 
in a, in a town that dies because of layoffs, you may not be able to control that you lost your job. You may not be able to control that your soulmate passed away or left you. You may not control that you just went bankrupt and lost everything. It may not be up to you why you are where you are. But you control whether you stay there. Again, if you feel like you've had a bad day, close your eyes and think about a child in a burn unit. Do you really have it that bad? So in closing, let me say again, control your own destiny. Take control. With a brand new year, decide to control your own destiny with a positive perspective, regardless of what anybody else might say or how much negative comes at you. Just block that negative with your shield of positive and take control of your destiny. Thank you again for tuning in for this week's motivational message. And if you missed the last couple of weeks, you'll find further down on the page here on um, Facebook those videos. Please feel free to leave a message, a comment. I invite you to tune in next Sunday for another motivational, me motivational message to my baby girl who's my true positive perspective in life. Regardless of anything else I might learn in life or have learned in life, she's my positive wind that drives my vessel down the road. I love her very much. I love you very much, my baby girl. Daddy loves you. You're always right here in my heart. You're my inspiration to make life worth living. Find your inspiration. I thank you for your time. I thank you for your continued prayers. I thank you for your inspirational and encouraging words from all of you. Until next time, Simplify.